Well, look, we're both mature adults with a reasonable amount of intelligence, right? The Brady Bunch, a beloved television series that aired from 1969 to 1974, followed the story of Mike and Carol's marriage and the blending of their families. The show portrayed a perfect American family living together with their housekeeper Alice and their dog Tiger. However, the show's end saw the unraveling of many deep secrets that had been kept hidden during its run. One such secret is the absence of Mike in the final episode. This has left many fans wondering about the reasons behind his disappearance. The show's portrayal of a happy family, with all their problems neatly resolved, was a stark contrast to the secrets that were kept under wraps. The Brady Bunch's popularity endured long after its cancellation, thanks to reruns that continued to air for decades. The show's impact transcended its time, leaving a lasting mark on American television. Despite its seemingly simple storyline, the show had a complex and intriguing narrative that has captivated audiences for generations. The secrets that were kept hidden during the show's run have added to its intrigue, making it an enduring classic that continues to resonate with audiences today. The Brady Bunch's legacy is a testament to the power of storytelling and the impact that a simple television show can have on American culture. Hey, I know who you are. No wonder he sings so good. The Brady Bunch, a beloved classic television sitcom, made its debut on ABC on September 26, 1969. The show, created by Sherwood Schwartz, followed the story of a blended family led by Mike Brady, a widowed architect, and father to three sons, Greg, Peter, and Bobby. On the other side, Carol Martin, a mother of three daughters, Marcia, Jan, and Cindy, also became a part of this new family. This groundbreaking series was one of the first to explore the concept of a blended family on television. The Brady Bunch household quickly became a symbol of unity and love, capturing the hearts of millions of viewers. The show ran until March 8, 1974, leaving a lasting impact on the television industry and the generations that followed. The Brady Bunch tackled everyday family problems with humor and grace, making it relatable and endearing to its audience. From their chaotic family vacation to Hawaii to the countless sibling fights, this classic series had something for everyone. The show's ability to resonate with its viewers was due in large part to the lovable and realistic family problems that everyone found themselves relating to. The Brady Bunch remains a beloved television classic, cherished by many for its heartwarming storylines and memorable characters. Its enduring legacy is a testament to the show's ability to captivate audiences and leave a lasting impact on the world of television. Whether you're a longtime fan or new to the series, the Brady Bunch is sure to provide hours of entertainment and nostalgia. You are going to design my new factory, and it will... A factory? The Brady Bunch, the beloved 1960s television series, presented a picture-perfect family to its audience. However, behind the scenes, the atmosphere was far from idyllic. The cast and crew often found themselves embroiled in various dramas that were largely unknown to the show's fans. One of the most enduring mysteries surrounding the show is what happened to Tiger, the Brady family's dog. Tiger was played by a series of different dogs throughout the show's five-season run, but he suddenly disappeared without any explanation. In reality, the show's producers simply decided that the dog was no longer necessary, and they wrote him out of the show. Another source of drama on the set of The Brady Bunch was the tumultuous relationship between Robert Reed, who played Mike Brady, and the show's producers. Reed was a trained Shakespearean actor who was highly critical of the show's simplistic scripts and felt that they did not do justice to his talents. He often clashed with the producers and even went so far as to rewrite some of his lines without their permission. Despite these challenges, The Brady Bunch remained a popular show throughout its run, and it has since become a beloved classic. Its wholesome depiction of family life has resonated with generations of viewers, and the show's catchy theme song is still instantly recognizable to this day. In the end, the behind-the-scenes drama on The Brady Bunch only served to make the show more interesting and enduring. While the cast and crew may have had their differences, they were ultimately able to come together and create a television series that has stood the test of time. Okay, kids. In this hat are the names of the seven dwarfs, and what you pick is what you get. The inspiration behind the creation of the popular 1969 TV series, The Brady Bunch, has an interesting backstory. The series creator, Sherwood Schwartz, revealed that the idea for the show came from a brief newspaper article he read in the Los Angeles Times in 1965. 
The article contained a mere four lines of statistics, indicating that 31% of all marriages involve people who had children from previous relationships. This small piece of information sparked an idea in Schwartz's mind about the unique challenges and joys of blending families. Thus, the concept for The Brady Bunch, a television series centered around a large blended family, was born. Through its portrayal of the Brady's everyday lives, the show highlighted the beauty and complexities of step families, leaving a lasting impact on audiences and becoming a beloved classic. In the casting process for The Brady Bunch, there were some interesting choices made. For instance, the role of Mike Brady was originally considered for Gene Hackman, who was still an unknown actor at the time. Ultimately, the producers decided to settle for Robert Reed, as they considered him the most successful of the two. Reed went on to play the role of Mike Brady throughout the entire series. Another notable casting choice was the decision to have Florence Henderson, who played Carol Brady, wear a wig throughout the entire first season. This was because Henderson had cropped her hair short for her role in an off-Broadway revival of South Pacific and needed to keep her real hair hidden. These costume challenges added an extra layer of complexity to the production of The Brady Bunch, but the cast and crew were able to overcome them and create a classic television show that is still beloved by audiences today. The show's enduring popularity is a testament to the talent and hard work of all those involved in its creation. <laughs> Why don't you let me help you with the horns? We got In one unforgettable episode of this classic television show, The Brady Bunch, an accident during filming led to a memorable moment. The episode, known as Oh, My Nose, revolves around the character Peter, played by Christopher Knight. Unable to throw a football properly, the show's writer, Lloyd Schwartz, had to step in. Schwartz, who also served as a director for the series, took the task of throwing the football seriously. He aimed straight for Maureen McCormick who portrayed Marsha Brady, and nailed it in just one take. This unexpected turn of events left McCormick with a real injury, a swollen nose. Yet, she carried on with the scene, creating a truly iconic moment in television history. This incident serves as a testament to the spontaneity often found behind the scenes of our favorite shows. Even though it was unintentional, the result became etched in viewers' memories, making the Brady Bunch all the more special and resonant in the annals of TV history. After all, it's these genuine moments that remind us of the human element inherent in storytelling through moving images. Huh? And I even collect lizards! Lizards? I collect them too! The Brady Bunch was a popular TV series that aired in the late 1960s, and like many shows, it wasn't without its share of drama behind the scenes. Two of the child actors, Maureen McCormick, who played Marsha Brady, and Eve Plum, who played Jan Brady, reportedly had a feud that lasted for years. It's said that the tension between the two actresses started early on and continued long after the show ended. According to Susan Olsen, who played Cindy Brady, the feud was apparent from day one. Olsen often found herself in the middle of the disagreements, trying to mediate and keep the peace. The feud between McCormick and Plum became so intense that at one point, there was no desire to communicate through Olsen or anyone else. It was a difficult situation, and Olsen described it as petty on both sides. Despite the animosity between the two actresses, the show remained a classic and beloved by many. The cast talent and chemistry on screen were undeniable, and the show's themes of family and togetherness continue to resonate with audiences today. It's important to remember that even on a beloved TV series like The Brady Bunch, there can be drama and conflict behind the scenes. However, the show's enduring popularity is a testament to the talent and hard work of the cast and crew and the impact it had on television and popular culture. <laughs> In the first season of The Brady Bunch, a tragic incident occurred when the family dog Tiger was killed by a car. This unfortunate event took place before the filming of Episode 5 was completed. The production team tried to find a replacement dog, but their efforts proved to be unworkable. As a result, Tiger's doghouse remained on the set serving a dual purpose. Firstly, it was a reminder of the beloved family pet. Secondly, it was used to hide a burned spot on the astroturf. The spot had been caused by a studio light that had fallen and burned a hole through the artificial grass. Even though Tiger was no longer part of the show, his presence was still felt through his doghouse. It remained a fixture on the set, serving as a silent tribute to the original family dog. 
The Brady Bunch continued to film around the doghouse, incorporating it into the background of many scenes. In this classic television series, the Bradys faced many challenges and adventures, but the loss of Tiger was a particularly poignant moment. Despite the tragedy, the family continued to move forward, finding ways to incorporate their memories into their daily lives. The enduring legacy of the Brady Bunch is a testament to the resilience and spirit of the Bradys, even in the face of adversity. Early. In creating the Brady Bunch, producer Sherwood Schwartz made an unusual decision. He chose child actors whose hair color closely matched their on-screen parents. The one exception was Susan Olsen, who played Cindy Brady, whose hair was dyed blonder. Meanwhile, Bobby Brady, played by Mike Lookinland, had his hair dyed darker. This unique approach created a distinctive family image that has become synonymous with the iconic television series. Behind the scenes, however, things were not always smooth sailing. Robert Reed, who portrayed architect Mike Brady, struggled with the show's creative direction. A classically trained Shakespearean actor, Reed frequently clashed with producers over the sitcom's tone and content. He found himself in a situation he hadn't anticipated, working on a program that wasn't aligned with his artistic goals. As time went on, these disagreements intensified, making his experience increasingly challenging. Schwartz envisioned the Brady Bunch as an educational tool, drawing inspiration from the Encyclopedia Britannica. His aim was to teach viewers valuable life lessons through relatable storylines while entertaining them. Unfortunately, Reed's vision differed significantly from Schwartz's. Despite these challenges, the show persevered, capturing audiences' hearts and becoming a beloved cultural phenomenon that still resonates today. What are you doing, trying to write a letter or start a paper drive? <laughs> it's a tough letter to write, Alice. The Brady Bunch, which debuted in 1969, features a unique family dynamic. A blended family consisting of six children brought together by their parents, Mike and Carol Brady. However, the backstory of Mike and Carol's previous marriages remains somewhat of a mystery throughout the series. Mike Brady, played by Robert Reed, was established early on as a widower. In the show's pilot episode, during the newlywed couple's honeymoon, a photograph of Mike's late wife is shown, confirming his prior marriage. This revelation served to explain the presence of Mike's three children from his previous marriage. On the other hand, Carol Brady's past remained shrouded in secrecy. Florence Henderson portrayed Carol as a loving mother of three girls, yet the identity of their father was never explicitly revealed. According to creator Sherwood Schwartz, Carol was indeed divorced from her first husband, but due to the sensitive nature of divorce as a topic during that era, especially on family-oriented programming, the show avoided addressing the situation directly. As a result, the audience was left to speculate about the circumstances surrounding Carol's earlier marriage. This decision to omit specific details regarding Carol's past allowed the show to maintain its focus on the comedic adventures and challenges faced by the Bradys while navigating life as a large, unconventional family. Despite the ambiguity concerning the parents' former partners, the program succeeded in delivering engaging content that resonated with viewers, making The Brady Bunch a beloved classic even today. Throughout its five-season run, the show tackled various issues relevant to families during that period, contributing to its lasting appeal among older adult audiences who fondly recall watching it during its original airing. By 1100 by three? Why not? The stuff left over! <laughs> Two-thirds of a cent. In the first episode of The Brady Bunch, viewers were introduced to a girl's cat named Fluffy. Interestingly, this episode was filmed over a year before any of the other episodes were made. During that time, the writers made the decision that two pets would be too complicated, and so Fluffy was never mentioned again. However, I like to think that she was probably the grandparents' cat, as the wedding did take place at their house, and that the cat continued to live with them. It's a small detail, but one that adds a bit of depth to the show's background. Who knows, maybe Fluffy even made a sneaky appearance in a later episode, blending in with the scenery of the grandparents' home. Either way, the absence of Fluffy didn't detract from the popularity of this classic TV series. Mom will find out how... In 1998, Nickelodeon introduced a playful promotional gimmick related to the popular classic, The Brady Bunch. This campaign featured a fictitious character named Phoebe Brady, portrayed as an evil fourth sister. According to this narrative, every time something negative occurred in the show, Phoebe was held accountable. The idea behind this lighthearted promotion was that during the reruns of the program, 
Phoebe had been edited out due to audience's disinterest in seeing a mischievous Brady sibling. Interestingly, elements of this fabricated storyline even involved interviews with some original cast members, further blurring the lines between reality and fiction. However, it is crucial to note that Phoebe Brady never actually existed within the universe of the Brady Bunch, despite how convincingly the promotion may have suggested otherwise. Instead, she was merely a creative marketing tool employed by Nickelodeon to generate interest and excitement around the beloved television series as it entered its rerun phase. We shouldn't have done this. You're both just scared. Why don't you admit it? I'm not. In the popular 1969 TV series, The Brady Bunch, the character of Carol Brady, played by Florence Henderson, was depicted as a devoted stay-at-home mother. However, Henderson had different ideas. She believed that Carol Brady should venture into the workforce, aligning more closely with her own real-life persona. Henderson consistently advocated for this change to the producers throughout the series' run. Despite Henderson's efforts, the producers decided to keep Carol Brady jobless. Nevertheless, the character remained active in other ways, often engaging in volunteer work focused on charitable fundraising. This aspect of Carol Brady's personality allowed Henderson to showcase her character's compassion and dedication to making a difference in her community. Although Carol Brady never held a paid position during the show's five-season tenure, her commitment to giving back through volunteering demonstrated that being a homemaker didn't limit one's potential to contribute positively to society. Ultimately, while viewers may have missed the opportunity to see Carol Brady excel in a professional setting, they still witnessed her strong sense of purpose and drive to make a difference beyond her role as a wife and mother. Well, all the traffic flow. Mm-hmm. Gee, I think that's very attractive. Yeah, I think that helps. Moreover, Florence Henderson aspired for her character Carol to reflect her own life experiences. She believed that infusing Carol with her personal struggles would create a more authentic connection with the audience. Florence faced significant challenges, including a spinal defect and hearing loss, which shaped her resilience. Her journey included overcoming a failed marriage and striving for success as a singer, actress, and author. During her presentations, she often shared these stories passionately. Dressed in a striking two-piece white suit adorned with rhinestones on the shoulders and a ruffle at the waist, she captivated her audience. Her hour and a half of storytelling and music moved many to their feet in applause, showing how her adversities fueled her desire to connect through her role on the show. Florence Henderson's ability to channel her experiences into her character made Carol Brady a beloved figure, resonating deeply with viewers who admired her strength and warmth. Come on now, honey, where is that understanding little girl that I know and love? Florence Henderson, the beloved actress known to many as the mother in the classic TV series The Brady Bunch, had a rich and varied background long before she became a household name. Raised as the tenth child of a sharecropper, and his wife in Indiana, Henderson developed a strong work ethic and a love for performing at a young age. Even as a child, Henderson was drawn to the world of entertainment. She would often sing popular Broadway tunes and songs that held special meaning for her, her family, and her career. Some of her favorites included My Old Kentucky Home, You Got a Friend, the theme from The Sound of Music, and Wind Beneath My Wings. As she grew older, Henderson's talent and determination led to big breaks on Broadway and in TV. She spoke often about the importance of focusing on the positive and maintaining a mental bank of good memories and experiences to draw upon in between each chapter of her life. Despite the many offers that came her way over the years, Henderson remained humble and grounded. She continued to work hard and pursue her passions, becoming a beloved figure in the world of entertainment and a role model for generations of fans. Throughout her life, Henderson remained committed to her craft and to the values that had shaped her as a child. She remained grateful for the opportunities that had come her way, and for the support of her family, friends, and fans. And she continued to sing, sharing her love of music and her positive spirit with all who knew her. Or your car, Dad? Come on, I'll drive over with you. In the popular 1969 TV series, The Brady Bunch, one of the actresses, Florence Henderson, who played the role of Carol Brady, opened up about her family's financial struggles during her childhood. Henderson mentioned that her family was poor, and sometimes they even went without basic necessities like shoes or new clothes. Despite their financial hardships, Henderson's mother worked tirelessly to provide for her family, inspiring Henderson with her words, it'll never be noticed on a galloping horse. Furthermore, Henderson had a minor form of spina bifida, a birth defect, 
which went unnoticed for years due to the family's inability to afford medical care. It wasn't until Henderson's career took her to New York that a chiropractor discovered her condition through an x-ray. This revelation highlights the challenges that many families faced during those times, struggling to make ends meet while also dealing with health issues. Despite these challenges, Henderson's mother remained a source of inspiration, teaching her the importance of hard work and perseverance. Henderson's story is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, even in the face of adversity. It's a reminder that success is not determined by one's circumstances, but by one's determination and hard work. And while financial struggles and health issues can be challenging, they can also be overcome with the right mindset and support system. For instance, who knows which side is port and which is starboard? The left side is port. In the early days of the Brady Bunch, actress Florence Henderson faced a few setbacks that she managed to turn into positive experiences. Henderson, who played the iconic role of Carol Brady, had her long blonde hair cut for a school play, which would have given her the first major part. However, when her mother cut her hair, Henderson missed out on the role. But instead of dwelling on the negative, she saw an opportunity to make the best of the situation. Henderson recalled, I was given the perm from hell, she said, referring to the tight blonde curls framing her face. Instead of playing the blessed mother, I became the baby Jesus. This is an example of how Henderson turned a negative into a positive, demonstrating her positive focus. In another instance, Henderson landed a small part in the show Showboat, despite a bathing suit she borrowed that didn't fit. An old stagehand helped her pull the suit together with safety pins, but Henderson believed it was her honesty about the ill fit that brought her back for a second audition. These early struggles showcased Henderson's resilience and ability to make the best of any situation, which no doubt contributed to her successful career in the Brady Bunch and beyond door neighbor then we went home and played mahjong until 10 then we went to bed it may not have been exciting but on the other hand florence henderson known to many as the beloved matriarch carol brady and the brady bunch faced significant challenges early in her career due to hearing problems starting after the birth of her second child henderson experienced issues with her inner ear which were exacerbated by subsequent pregnancies she described this period as incredibly difficult admitting that she struggled to hear specific instruments while singing and acting, causing fear and uncertainty. Fortunately, medical intervention came just in time. Following necessary surgery to correct her hearing deficit, Henderson found herself ready to face an audition for a role that would become iconic, joining the cast of The Brady Bunch. Despite these obstacles, Henderson persevered through her difficulties, demonstrating resilience and determination to succeed in her chosen field. Her ability to overcome personal adversity ultimately paved the way for her successful tenure on this classic television program. It's the best I can do in short notice. Thanks, Alice. Well, come on, honey. Let's see you do your stuff. Okay, Cindy. After failing to get a part in another TV show, Robert Reed, who would later become known for his role in The Brady Bunch, didn't give up. When he heard about the auditions for the role of Mike Brady, he learned that someone else had already been chosen for it. But Reed wasn't ready to throw in the towel just yet. He boarded a plane to Houston for the audition, believing that anything could happen. Reed's determination paid off when he landed the part, becoming the patriarch of one of America's most beloved television families. The show became a massive hit, airing for five seasons and spawning numerous spin-offs and remakes over the next 25 years. Today, The Brady Bunch remains popular worldwide, airing in more than 150 countries. Despite starting off as a replacement for another actor, Reed's portrayal of Mike Brady resonated with audiences everywhere. His character embodied many admirable qualities, including patience, kindness, and understanding, making him a positive influence on generations of viewers. Through hard work and persistence, Reed proved that sometimes taking a chance can lead to great things. This is really gonna work great. Okay, hurry up! In the late 1960s, the world was introduced to the Brady Bunch, a television series that followed the lives of a large blended family. But behind the scenes, one of the show's stars, Florence Henderson, was dealing with personal challenges. As her career took off, her marriage began to fail. In search of help, she turned to therapy and found solace in the guidance of Dr. John Kappas. Dr. Kappas, a clinical psychologist and hypnotherapist from California, taught Henderson how to reprogram her unconscious mind to achieve her goals. In just six weeks, he helped her overcome stage fright and a fear of flying. Henderson was so pleased with the results that she decided to return to his school to become a certified hypnotherapist herself. 
Henderson once described herself as a frustrated doctor, always eager to improve and help those around her. Her experience with therapy and hypnotherapy was a turning point in her life, and she wanted to share the benefits with others. Through therapy and hypnotherapy, Henderson was able to gain a better understanding of herself and her needs. She learned how to manage her fears and anxieties, and in doing so, became a stronger and more confident person. Her journey is a testament to the power of therapy and the importance of self-care. In the world of the Brady Bunch, Henderson's character, Carol Brady, was the picture of a perfect wife and mother. But in reality, Henderson was a complex and multifaceted individual who was always striving to improve herself and help those around her. Her story is a reminder that even in the midst of success and fame, it's important to take care of one's mental health and well-being. <laughs> a necktie! Well, sure, Pete. Barry Williams, the actor who played the oldest member of the Brady Bunch kids, Greg Brady, faced a difficult choice during his time on the show. With his dreamy blue eyes and charming smile, Williams became one of TV's biggest heartthrobs, and young women, teens, and adults alike all clamored to get an autograph from the young star. Despite the attention from fans, Williams preferred his alone time. He wasn't all that interested in dating, as his only love at the time was his acting career and the Brady Bunch. According to a 1973 interview with the Tampa Tribune, Williams took an interest in acting at a young age. He would beg his mom, who was resistant for some time, to let him start acting. When he was 11, she finally agreed. When I play a part, I am a tool, my resource, Williams said. If I don't have part of the character in me, I do research to find out more about him. At the time of the interview, Williams was 19 and attended Pepperdine University in Malibu. School and work took up most of his time. He would attend classes in the mornings and spend his afternoons working on set of the Brady Bunch. To add even more to the young star's plate, he would spend another three days attending singing, dancing, and acting classes. Williams admitted to missing having a normal childhood, but with the perks that come along with having an acting career, it's hard to want to strip it all away. The compensation alone was enough for Williams to have no regrets. Acting is my life, and it's more important to me than a social life, Williams said. Like recognition, it has its advantages and its disadvantages. I may get a better table at a restaurant, but my meals are interrupted by people wanting autographs. In the end, Williams chose the Brady Bunch over his social life. His dedication to his craft and his character shone through in every episode, making the show a classic that continues to be loved by audiences today. Look, one hand! The Brady Bunch, the classic 1969 TV series, was not without its share of off-screen drama. The rivalry between two of the actresses, Susan Olsen, who played Cindy Brady, and Florence Henderson, who played Carol Brady, made headlines over the years. Rumors of a feud between Olsen and Henderson, also known as Cindy and Carol Brady, have been circulating for decades. In 2010, a planned Brady Bunch reunion was canceled due to reported tension between the two actresses. A source told Radar Online that everyone tells a slightly different story of what happened, but the bottom line is that they didn't want to be on the same show, and the appearance was canceled because of it. The source added that the feud between Olsen and Henderson goes back decades and that they've never liked each other. The problems between the two reportedly stemmed from Olsen's claim that she and Henderson had been more than just friends while filming the series. However, the source told Radar Online that the feud really originated in the 70s. Despite the reported tension, Olsen and Henderson appeared to put their differences aside for the 2019 HGTV series, a very Brady renovation. In an interview with E! News, Olsen was asked if there was a remedy to her alleged feud with Henderson. There's no people like to say things, she said laughing. There's no remedy needed. In fact, I only have good things to say about my reunion with my former castmates. You know, we're all grown up now, obviously, and we all get along like real people. HGTV just offered us an extended family reunion. It seems that whatever beef there was between Olsen and Henderson is now water under the bridge. The two, along with their other TV siblings, partnered with home design experts to renovate the interior of the real Brady Bunch house in Studio City, California. The feud may have been a thing of the past, but the memories and the impact of the classic TV series will live on. See? <laughs> oh. Ribbit! Ribbit! <laughs> the Brady Bunch, a classic TV series that aired in the late 1960s and early 1970s, presented a wholesome image of a blended family with six children. 
The show's storylines revolved around teachable lessons and the caring parents, Carol and Mike, who were the epitome of wholesomeness. However, the behind-the-scenes happenings and cast relationships were far juicier than what was shown on air. Carol, played by Florence Henderson, became synonymous with the archetypal mother figure. Despite her on-screen persona, Henderson was known for her fun-loving nature and great sense of humor. A rumor that haunted Henderson throughout her life was that she and Williams, who played her eldest son Greg, had an affair. Williams, who was 16 at the time, admitted to having a crush on his on-screen mom. But Henderson, who was a happily married mother of four, made sure things never progressed beyond being work colleagues. On the other hand, McCormack, who played the eldest Brady daughter Marcia, had a different experience. She dated Williams during filming, but later regretted it stating that she felt like she was kissing her brother. McCormack, who was 14 when the series began airing, battled anxiety and personal insecurities due to playing the sweet and wholesome Marcia. Following the end of the series, she struggled with cocaine and qualued abuse and depression. However, she eventually came to terms with and accepted her Brady character. In summary, while the Brady Bunch presented a squeaky clean image on television, the cast's real-life relationships were more complex. The actors who played the Bradys had their own secrets and scandals, much like any other family. Despite the challenges they faced, the cast members have since moved on and found success in their respective careers. Yeah, you should love to hear it. Um, so I come in, I see. In the 1960s, Robert Reed became a household name for playing the role of Mike Brady, the level-headed patriarch in the popular TV series The Brady Bunch. While he portrayed the perfect husband and father on screen, his personal life told a different story. Just like many teenagers in the 1970s, Reed admitted to experimenting with drugs. However, unlike most teens, the consequences of his actions did not remain hidden. During one particular incident, Reed revealed that he and some friends smoked marijuana during a break from filming. Coincidentally, the show's producers called him back to work in the midst of this high. Although Reed expressed regret over the situation, Viewers can supposedly see the effects of his impairment in the 1973 episode titled Law and Disorder. According to Reed, he considered himself to be a better actor when sober compared to being high. Despite his seemingly idyllic home life on set, Robert Reed led a secretive personal life that contrasted sharply with his character's image. As a closeted homosexual, Reed faced challenges and struggles unique to his circumstances during a period when societal acceptance of non-heterosexual relationships remained low. Keeping his true identity concealed was common practice among actors fearful that revealing their sexual orientation might jeopardize their careers. Behind the scenes, however, several cast members suspected that Reed lived differently from what he presented publicly. His unhappiness reportedly stemmed from having to maintain two separate lives, one as a respected actor and another as someone living against cultural norms. Reed's colleague Florence Henderson, who played Carol Brady, offered insight into her co-star's inner turmoil in an interview with ABC News in 2000. She recalled feeling sympathy towards Reed and believing that if he hadn't felt compelled to hide his authentic self, his discontent may have subsided significantly. Despite widespread knowledge of Reed's alternative lifestyle amongst those working closely alongside him, it wasn't something openly addressed or acknowledged. Henderson even speculated that had the public become aware of Reed's sexuality during the show's original run, audiences wouldn't have accepted him as readily in the paternal figure he so skillfully embodied. Thus, Robert Reed continued performing his duties diligently, delivering lines infused with warmth and wisdom, all while grappling with profound emotional distress. I just said the magic words, abracadabra. Hey, Peter. Yeah, man? That's all. In the final episode of the beloved TV series, The Brady Bunch, entitled The Harebrain Scheme, the audience may have noticed a significant absence. The family's patriarch, Mike Brady, played by Robert Reed, was nowhere to be seen throughout the entire episode. This omission was due to Reed's disagreement with the content of the episode, which he considered ridiculous and unbelievable. Sherwood Schwartz, the show's creator, revealed that Reed had announced his refusal to participate in the episode the morning of the shoot, stating, I won't do the show. Despite his reluctance, Reed remained on set, voicing his complaints about the absurdity of a hair tonic causing such dramatic changes to hair color. Interestingly, Reed's concern was not unwarranted, as hair tonics typically cannot cause the extreme transformation portrayed in the episode. However, his descent led him to miss out on appearing in what would become the series' last episode. 
Unaware of the impending cancellation, the rest of the cast carried on, forming a close bond despite the sudden ending. Producer Lloyd Schwartz later explained that Reed's primary grievance was the improbability of hair tonic producing such drastic results. Regardless, the disgruntled actor's choice not to take part left a noticeable void during the emotional conclusion. Though Robert Reed was absent from the screen, his presence was undoubtedly felt among the cast and crew. I wasn't talking about you, well, primarily. Quote, effective immediately, we all sh After the initial cancellation of The Brady Bunch in 1974, the show found a second life in syndication starting in 1976. This unexpected turn of events set the stage for various spin-offs and adaptations over the years. In 1977, Sid and Marty Croft, known for producing The Donnie and Marie Show, decided to create a variety show centered around the Brady family titled The Brady Bunch Variety Hour. Despite the original creator's lack of involvement, the Crofts managed to produce eight more one-hour specials called The Brady Bunch Hour. Most of the original cast members rejoined the project, except for Eve Plum, who was replaced by Jerry Rachel. Regrettably, the majority of the actors involved agree that this iteration failed to deliver. However, the Bradys weren't finished yet. In 1981, NBC revived the franchise with The Brady Girls Get Married, initially planned as a two-hour TV movie. Later, it evolved into the short-lived series The Brady Brides, featuring Maureen McCormick and Eve Plum as newlyweds sharing a household with their husbands. Unfortunately, McCormack opted out of future projects, leading to her character's absence in subsequent installments. She was eventually replaced by Leah Ayers in the 1990 adaptation, The Bradys. Another significant milestone occurred during the holidays in 1988, with A Very Brady Christmas, a two-hour TV movie reuniting the entire clan. However, Jennifer Runyon stepped in for Susan Olsen due to her pregnancy at the time. The movie proved successful and remains the highest-rated TV movie of 1988. Following its triumph, CBS commissioned three two-hour movies connected to the Brady universe, resulting in a two-hour movie and four one-hour episodes entitled Simply the Bradys. Since then, multiple documentaries, specials, plays, parodies, and references across different platforms have paid tribute to this iconic classic. Two motion pictures emerged in 1995 and 1996, The Brady Bunch Movie and a very Brady sequel respectively. These films aim to emphasize the stark contrast between contemporary society and the wholesome values embodied by the Brady Bunch. Additionally, they poked fun at the original show while reminding audiences of simpler times gone by. Alongside these productions, merchandise ranging from toys to music albums, books, and memorabilia continues to flood the market, solidifying the lasting impact of this beloved cultural treasure. Hi, Alice. Hi, Jim.